Welcome to Unit 1 of the Entomological Surveillance Planning Tool Training. My name is Marcy Opio, and on behalf of the Malaria Elimination Initiative at the University of California, San Francisco, and the University of Notre Dame, I am excited to introduce you to the ESPT today. First, what is the ESPT? The Entomological Surveillance Planning Tool, or ESPT, aligns with and aims to distill normative guidance from the World Health Organization, or WHO, the U.S. President's Malaria Initiative, or PMI, and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, into an operational decision support tool to promote cost-effective, locally tailored, and evidence-based vector control. The ESPT can be used in multiple ways. First, it can be used to design and plan entomological surveillance activities, including selecting appropriate indicators and sampling methods. Second, it can be used to interpret entomological data in the context of epidemiological, human behavior, and other data. Finally, it can be used to guide program decisions on selecting, targeting, and tailoring appropriate vector control interventions. The ESPT uses a question-based approach to entomological surveillance to ensure relevant and actionable data are collected. This approach supports practical, fit-for-purpose, and cost-effective entomological surveillance and locally tailored and evidence-based vector control and will be discussed further under Module 1, which comes next. Now that we have addressed what the ESPT is, why was it developed? Well, the ESPT was developed in direct response to national malaria program demand for more operational guidance on entomological surveillance. The tool was developed in 2017 by UCSF's Malaria Elimination Initiative and the University of Notre Dame in collaboration with an entomological surveillance working group. The working group comprised experts from national malaria programs, regional elimination networks, WHO, PMI, research institutes, and implementing partners. The tool was piloted in 2018 and 2019 with national programs in four countries spanning Africa, Latin America, and the Asia Pacific. Findings from the pilot, which included program and partner feedback on usability and acceptability, informed the finalization of the tool in 2020. The ESPT is currently available in five languages, including English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese, as well as Farsi, which was generously and independently translated by the Iran Ministry of Health and medical education together with the Mazandaran University of Medical Sciences. All language versions of the ESPT are currently available on the MEI website at shrinkingthemalariamap.org. The ESPT is divided into nine modules, which you will see on the next slide. For each module, there are two to three learning objectives that indicate the knowledge or skills that you should learn by the end of that module. Together, the learning objectives for the individual models contribute to the overall learning objectives of the ESPT training course. By the end of this course, you should be able to use the ESPT to design, plan, and implement entomological surveillance activities based on your program's priority questions. Use the ESPT to analyze, interpret, and integrate entomological data with other key data, for example, epidemiological and human behavioral data to inform malaria program decision making. And lastly, interpret and apply the ESPT's decision trees and tables. Understanding how to navigate the ESPT is critical to be able to use it. Here is the ESPT navigation tree, which is figure one in the introduction of the ESPT. The ESPT is structured according to nine models, and the tool is iterative in nature, meaning that you can work through the models as many times as you want or need until you arrive at a feasible entomological surveillance plan. This training follows the order of the modules in the ESPT. After this introduction module, the training starts with module one to help you identify your priority program question that you want to answer with entomological surveillance data, such as are long-lasting insecticide-treated nets an effective intervention in my area. Then module two guides you through selecting appropriate indicators and identifying minimum essential entomological indicators to answer the identified program question. 
Module 3 helps you to determine the appropriate mosquito sampling method or methods based on your question and the entomological indicators you selected in Module 2. Module 4 guides you on selecting sites and the appropriate survey type. And then Module 5 supports you in selecting the optimal sampling design based on the minimum essential data needed and the resources available to the program. Module 6 offers some guidance on managing entomological data, both in the field and laboratory. And finally, modules 7, 8, and 9 include a series of decision trees that guide you through the process of developing your data, collection, plan, and interpreting data. When you first start working with the ESPT, I strongly recommend that you work through modules 1 through 9 in the order presented here by the navigation tree. However, as you become more familiar with the ESPT, you may not need to follow this exact order every time, especially as you iterate existing surveillance plans to adapt to new and emerging priority questions over time. Here is an overview of the ESPT training course. As noted, the training module numbers correspond to the module numbers in the ESPT. So module one of the training covers module one of the ESPT tool. This training course is made up of 11 total modules divided across three units. We estimate that roughly two and a half hours are needed to complete the full training course, but we encourage participants to go at the pace that best suits their needs and learning style, starting and stopping in between modules as needed. After completing this introduction module, we will start with module one on identifying priority program questions, followed by module two on selecting minimum essential entomological indicators. Then we move to unit two, which covers module three on sampling methods and analytical techniques, module four on sampling site and survey type selection, module five on sampling design, and module six on basic data management, for entomological data. The final unit, Unit 3, provides an overview on how and when to use the decision trees in modules 7, 8, and 9, and walks through several examples of working through the full ESPT navigation tree. Before we divide into the ESPT content, let's make sure that you are set up to have a successful training session. First, I strongly recommend that you have a copy of the ESPT tool in front of you, either digital or paper. Second, you will need a notepad and writing utensil or computer if you prefer to complete the exercises and take notes. Third, because this training is online, you will also need a stable internet connection and functional speakers or earphones if you plan to listen to the audio voiceover. Note that if you are viewing these modules via YouTube, you can turn on video subtitles by clicking on the closed captioning symbol at the bottom of the YouTube video. Fourth, please have any relevant malaria program documents or data in front of you, such as the National Malaria Strategic Plan, Vector Control, and Entomological Surveillance Guidelines, and Annual Operational Plans. In Module 1, I will provide guidance on how to formulate your own priority program question. Subsequent module activities refer back to this question, so please remember it. You will see that there are types of slides that are repeated throughout the training. Learning objectives will be presented at the start of each module on a turquoise background as shown here. Next, while this training is focused on how to use the ESPT, some background knowledge on entomological surveillance is required. Therefore, key concepts are reviewed at the start of each module as needed. Third, to help you apply your understanding to the real world, an illustrative example is used through all training modules distinguished by an orange slide like that shown here. Fourth, a gray slide with this desk icon will be used to denote slides with exercises, which will be used throughout the training to help solidify your learning. Exercises can be done individually or together in a small group. Exercises should take between 10 to 20 minutes to complete, and each successive exercise builds on the work of the previous exercises. Two key concepts that underline this entire ESPT training. First, entomological surveillance, which can be defined as the collection of entomological data over space and time. 
In the context of malaria, entomological surveillance is essential to understand mosquito vector species composition, population dynamics, and behavioral traits that affect disease transmission and intervention effectiveness. Second, vector control intervention, which in the context of this training refers to measures of any kind against malaria transmitting mosquitoes intended to limit their ability to transmit the disease. This concludes the introduction module of the ESPT training. Please proceed to module one on identifying priority program questions.